Guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the Arsenio Bug Show. This is your host, as always. Guys, if this is the first time you're tuning in, I want to give you guys a nice, warm welcome. Uh, I talk a lot about personal development. I talk a lot about, you know, becoming the best version of yourself and, of course, relating it to my life and what I've been through here in Thailand and my life in general. But today's not the day to talk about me. Today's the day to talk about this man sitting right in front of me. We just got done with a grueling workout, which we're going to talk about, like conditioning, because I think conditioning is above cardio because it's just so goddamn difficult. But this man, his, his nickname is AJ. My nickname is AJ out here. But he's about five of me. This guy is huge. The first time I met him, I was like, I'm just going to get rid of my nickname. But you know what? Man, thank you so much, AJ, for coming on today, my brother. My pleasure. My yeah. pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so I want, uh, I want you to tell everyone who you are. Just give a nice rundown, and then we're just going to take everyone on a journey. Well, so we're going to do a start. Uh, I, was, I was born in Lithuania. There you go. Uh, born and raised. And slowly but surely... Uh, gravitate towards the United States uh, through military. So I started in the army in Lithuania, and then just after twists and turns, I ended up in in America studying in the United States Coast Guard Academy. Uh, I also had an opportunity to study uh, at West Point, uh, but I kind of turned it down. I wanted to try something, something new, something different. And upon graduating from the United States Coast Guard Academy, um, I started working, instead of continuing my journey in the military, uh, I realized that's not my cup of tea. And uh, started with civil engineering, which was my degree that I obtained uh, while being in the military as well. Civil engineering was not my <laughs> calling at all. Like, this job, uh, just horrible. Just horrible. terrible, yeah, huh? I could not, I could not handle it. Uh, it's like, uh, so next thing, um, next thing I knew, I ended up in Thailand, teaching middle school girls math. Yeah. <laughs> Is that right? It's funny how yeah. all of us end up at this job here in Thailand teaching English. It's so funny, yeah. man. So, yeah, teaching math and English, yeah. And uh, then started teaching online, ESL online. Oh, so yeah. I'm, I'm, still, I'm still technically in, in it, uh, less so because now I transition to personal training and uh, strength and conditioning. Uh-huh. So I had that, yeah, um, I started in Chambri, so it's all over the place. Wow. I started in Chambri, spent a year there, uh-huh. uh, also started working online, uh-huh. and um, worked for two companies, and then worked my way up uh, into teaching other teachers on how to teach young Chinese kids English. Whoa, yeah. and that was online, or was that in person? Yeah, online. online. Whoa. So uh, I worked for one of the biggest... Uh, online English companies. What's it's the name? Five on Talk. Ah, yes. Yeah. I was supposed to get a job with them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I train, train new teachers for them. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and do teacher development trainings. Uh-huh. So, yeah. Uh, still still in it for a little bit just uh, for extra, extra income, you know. Uh-huh. Uh, and I had a... So, I got certified back in the States as a strength and conditioning coach and wow. personal trainer. Mm-hmm. Uh I didn't get to use it as much. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just helping out my friends. I, I was uh, on a boxing team uh, mm-hmm. back at the at the Coast Guard Academy, wow. and uh, I, w- I was running a strength and conditioning program right. uh, there uh, for myself and other teammates. Right. Uh, and yeah, so slowly got, gravitated towards Bangkok. Uh, How long have you been here for? It's less than a year. Still, yeah, less than a year. And uh, trying to establish myself in the fitness industry. So I started at one of the boutique gyms, The oh. Edge. And then... Uh, Man, that sounds so familiar. Yeah, okay. Was, it's it's the same area. As same area the as uh, the yeah. lab out yeah. there in Superman. Yeah. 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 So, okay. yeah. And ended up picking up... Ended up meeting uh, Rich, the CEO of the lab. And then uh, we kicked it off and yeah here I am just and how long uh, have you been working with the lab for uh, just over three months I would say okay yeah something okay. around so, yeah so, sounds about right about three months yeah, yeah. yeah. okay so it just seems yeah. like fresh yeah you being 
Of course, Lithuania, going into the Coast Guard, you've always been part of the fit life, Definitely. it seems like. yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I swam as a kid. Uh, I was a swimmer. And then in Lithuania, basketball is like what we call it our second religion. Oh. So basketball is huge, huge huh. in, uh, in Lithuania. And then um, I played in college for a year. Mm -hmm. uh, I did not... So basketball has always been my passion. I love basketball, and it was just one of the. It was a. It's just. It's just a great, uh, great thing to do, you know, yeah. as a, as a hobby. Yeah. But once I started, it started feeling as, like work, you know. I don't. Yeah, it's just when you're playing. Yeah. Uh, you're, when you're playing in college, you're yeah, you're putting in a lot of work, and it just it just becomes. Uh, part of your routine and, and it's not it's just, fun anymore you're not enjoying it anymore yeah yeah so uh a year year in college yeah uh, played played basketball and then <laughs> that was a that's a funny story so uh i was in the military like a glee club uh -huh. yeah so we we were performing uh at this national boxing championship right yeah and uh, we were singing the national anthem, uh -huh. and one of my buddies uh, from Lithuania, he he studied at the Air Force Academy. He was competing, right? Uh, and we we're just watching a heavyweight fight together, wow. uh, heavyweight finals together. And he and I just kind of jokingly said, "Oh, I can beat these guys." <laughs> the, the thing is, how tall? How tall are you? Six seven. Jesus. Yeah, over six seven. Yeah, uh -huh. uh, and I was like, "I can beat these guys." And he's like, uh, "Yeah, why don't you? Why don't you try it out?" Uh -huh. It's like I never, I never thought that I want to get hit in the head and then <laughs> by hitting other people. So uh, it was. It so was you a, went for it. Yeah. Oh but God. I just found my found found the coach of the Coast Guard Academy, and then it's like, "Hey, uh, I want to, I want to compete." I want to try it. I want to wow. try it out. So I started, uh, started working on it uh, a couple a couple months in. Uh, he puts me in for this Veterans Day uh, fight. Uh -huh. You know, it was it was on it was on ESPN2. Like, um, no yeah, way. Yeah, national TV. Get yeah, out of yeah, here. Yeah, it was on oh, my TV. God. My first fight. Just no no prior no uh, boxing experience. I mean, I I did some MMA, just dabbled and yeah. uh, in it, mm -hmm. but it, nothing nothing real contact. No, nothing right. uh, like a real fight. Right. So yeah, uh, completely embarrassed myself on national TV. What happened? Uh, yeah. So <laughs> there was a guy about my about my size, it, just yeah. like a weight wise, a bit shorter, uh -huh. uh, with four-ish years of boxing experience. Uh -huh. So got my, yeah, butt-handed. Damn. Did you survive yeah. all the rounds or did you get KO'd? Uh, well, got, I hate to ask you that. I got, no, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, I got, uh, the fight got stopped. I didn't get KO'd. Oh, the fight it's... got stopped in the second round, I believe. Second round? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it was that bad? What? He just came out just flailing. Yeah. It was Swinging. Just, it was just... Yeah, it was bad. It was bad. It was just, <laughs> I was so, I was so overly excited, and there, yeah. So I was not, I did not have a skill set right, uh, right, to right. sustain the pressure that I was, wow. <laughs> I was getting. So yeah, first fight, just completely embarrassed myself on national TV, and then I was kind of, hey, maybe I started questioning myself. I was like, hey, maybe this is not for me. Uh -huh. uh, but instead of giving it up, we kind of, I, I realized that I've been in it for like. Not even three months. Uh -huh. uh, so started working hard. Uh -huh. uh, started putting in work. Uh, found a sparring partner uh -huh. who was uh, was actually my size because other guys that would be sparring uh -huh. uh, while training would be way shorter, uh -huh. uh, way smaller. So it was like it, it was different. I couldn't feel. It was a huge difference when you step in the ring with a guy, you know, your weight. Right. So um, yeah. We started sparring with this professional boxer. Uh -huh. uh, so he, yeah, he was a pro. He just turned a pro. He had some solid fights under his belt. Right. Uh, really high level amateur. Uh, he was, yeah, Golden Gloves. Golden Gloves, yeah. Golden yeah, Gloves yeah, yeah. champion. Uh -huh. Yeah, and uh, high profile guy. Yeah. So got my nose broken a couple of times while I was sparring with him, you know? Yes. <laughs> just. Uh, Good times though, so I I just started improving like crazy. Right. Just you know. So you, you continued boxing. Right. Huh? Yeah, I continued oh, wow. boxing, and so the same year after, 
yeah, embarrassing myself on <laughs> national TV. I kept, I kept fighting. Uh, I got some uh, five wins in a row under my belt or something that like right? that. Okay. And uh, qualified for the national championships. And so long story short, made it to the finals of the heavyweight uh, national championships that year. Uh -huh. And uh, so fought the same guy. Uh, the who, guy that handed to you on ESPN yeah, on, too. Yep, yeah, exactly. Oh, and, tell me you won. Yeah, I, I lost by split decision. Oh in the no! Yeah, yeah. But I mean, damn. <laughs> it was okay. A split decision loss, and yeah, it was a. Uh, it could have gone either way, so it, it's okay. my fault that I didn't. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then wow. next year, next year I ended up uh, winning the heavyweight uh, championship. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. And it, then yeah. Yeah, so that was it. And then you ended up retiring from boxing. Uh, yeah, so it was... Technically? I was, I was going to go... Oh, yeah. Uh, I had two ways, you know, uh -huh. either to go all in or all, all out. Yeah. So we're thinking about Olympic qualifiers, but mm -hmm. it was uh, when I, once I won the nationals, it was too late for uh, the Olympic qualifiers already. And uh, so it was either I'm turning pro, I'm going, I'm going up, or mm -hmm. I'm kind of just... I didn't want to dabble, you know, uh, half-ass. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Amateur boxing. So I decided that I'm gonna earn earn my living, you know, other ways. Uh -huh. <laughs> so yeah, uh, did some did some boxing here. Uh, nothing competitive. Uh, just trained some people. Okay. You know, with, uh, in basic boxing skills. Just boxing here in Bangkok, and this is over the last three months, right? Uh, over the last year. Yeah. Oh, over yeah. the last year. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. So, oh yeah, personal trainer for three months. Right. Okay, so yeah. boxing isn't that prevalent here though, right? Muay Thai is Muay still Thai. the thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah absolutely. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. But, I mean, boxing, boxing is an art. So what I realized is that boxing wasn't just hitting someone in right. the head, you know? It's just right. such a, it's an, it's a, uh, it's art. It's an right. art, yeah. Right. And the thing is with boxing, man, uh, as much as I appreciate it and whatnot, I actually met Marvin Hagler. I remember Devon Alexander, he was coming up about eight years ago. He fought like Timothy Bradley, who fought Manny Pacquiao. Uh, he was sitting in my dental chair when I was a dental assistant. He was like, yeah, I fought on HBO before. And I'm like, huh? I was like, what's your name? And he's like, oh, my name's Devon Alexander. I said, oh, my brother talks about you. The most humble guy ever, you know? But if you look at back in the 80s, if you look at the Meldrick Taylor the Tommy Hitman Hearns, you know, the people yeah. who actually suffered so much blows to the head. I mean, if we look at Evander Holyfield, Riddick Bowe, man, those guys have such a bad speech problem, you know oh, what yeah. I mean? So oh, yeah. when I look at boxing, it's like such, it's an art, but it's one of the most brutal, I mean, it's kind of, it's crazy how fans cheer it on to see another man almost kill another <laughs> man, and it's almost happened. Well, actually, it's happened in the ring. A Korean guy yeah. died a long time ago. But, uh, wow, so you tried that out, and then after that, you, again, you said all in, or that's it. Exactly, yeah, just um, that type of person. Yeah. You know, I either go all in or all out. And, so, when, and when was the last time you had a fight? Uh, five years ago, maybe. Oh, less, okay. Maybe less than that, yeah. Four, yeah, four-ish years ago. Okay, so between Three, that four-year period and the one-year period coming here, what did you do? Uh, so uh, I finished with a... With the military, uh, uh, then uh, started uh, started engineering, which uh, was not my cup of tea. <laughs> engineering, oh my god! Yeah, yeah. civil engineering, uh, and then yeah, started teaching math. Teaching uh, math, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's and it. And then established myself as a as an online teacher, like oh, a, so okay. a lot of dig digital nomading. Uh, I was I was traveling a lot, and it was easy to yeah easy to sustain myself. So uh -huh. yeah, travel all over Southeast Asia, India. Uh, I'm European, so yeah, I visited pretty much every country in Europe. <laughs> yeah. right. Have you been to Georgia by any chance? So, no, I'm oh, not. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 got I got some friends there. I got Is some that friends. right? Yeah, okay. There were some uh, some international students uh, mm -hmm. at the Coast Guard Academy from Georgia. Wow. So yeah, they. Okay. Yeah. They, so U.S. military runs this program, you know, uh, that supports right. uh, NATO countries mm -hmm. and provides them with education in the, in the states, and then sends them back home. Right. So yeah, it just I was lucky enough to to have an option. Uh -huh. uh, Freedom of choice. Freedom of choice. Okay. <laughs> yeah, All right. And then when it comes to digital nomad, what's something? Because a lot of people, 
you see a lot of blogs out there. Of course, you know, my content writer talks about, you know, being a, what is it, an interdependent entrepreneur? Something like that, whereas you're, you know, living as a, a digital nomad. Right. What are, you did it, okay, you were traveling around Southeast Asia, working online. What are three key things that you could take away from that in terms of giving to other people who might want to consider this in a couple of years? And this might be the big thing anyways because autonomy and the autonomous jobs are coming very, very soon. Absolutely. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> and as you can as you can see, like I don't I don't like working for someone. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> I like yeah, being yeah, independent. Yeah. I like doing my thing. Exactly. Uh, Me so too. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. I like working with people, not for people. Exactly. And yeah, I like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. See, that's the thing. You know. Yeah, so three things. Um, I'd say number one, it's not it's not as hard as you think it is. Mm. It really it really isn't uh, just. Finding the niche that you're interested in, and I think it was it was uh, I remember this quote uh, that a man who puts in puts in the time, extra time to hustle after his uh, daily desk job does not stay at the bottom for for long. Something like I'm butchering it, but yeah, 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 something like that. Uh Uh, Yeah, so it's definitely not as hard as you as you think it is. So finding the niche, and then uh, there's so many ways to make uh, make a living. Yeah, online. I'm telling you, it's there's so many ways. Uh, Even and and no one's talking about it. Exactly. I mean, even online teaching. Online teaching is probably one of the easiest easiest ones because uh, all you have to all you have to do is get the lesson from five one talk and literally just. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just so easy uh, to get if you're, especially if you're American, uh, Americans and Canadians. It's insane just having that passport. Yeah, so you you don't even imagine how how much that thing is valued in the world, especially uh, in the online world. Right, because China they want American teachers. Exactly. Like, I, exactly. I don't know. Yeah. They're, just, they're not exactly. really, you know, when it comes to British. Sorry, guys. Uh, but you know, this uh, they don't. You know, they exactly. say American passport holders. Yeah, they, yeah. They, want, they want that. They want uh, American English for some reason. Oh, right, right, right. right. So yeah. that's, yeah, that was that was interesting. <laughs> it's super, super easy to get uh, to land the job. Okay. As long as you have an American passport, you speak English, that's that's about it. That's it. Yeah. No, no experience needed. Yeah, usually, right? usually not. I right, mean, right, it, right. It's, it's nice to have... A TEFL course, right, TEFL right, certi- right. Certi- certification. Yeah, uh, but it's easily you can easily obtain that online mm-hmm. at this point. So it's yeah. All right. Uh, all right. So it's not number one. Not as hard as you think it is. Okay. Uh, number two. Uh, so number two would be have to put in work. So have yeah. to dedicate. You have to I, dedicate some time uh, to whatever whatever you're thinking about doing. Right. It's you have to put in work. So right. if you're working nine to five, uh-huh. hey, five, five to six, or yeah, in the morning, you get a workout in. That's exactly like what you. Gary Vee says, guys. Yeah. I've been telling you about Gary Vee. Yeah. He says, hey, you know, when you finish, when you finish work, what are you doing from this time to this time, or what are you doing in the morning to, you know, you, you know, you gotta. They call they call it hustling. You know what I mean? So, exactly. Yeah, yeah, you have to. I mean, instead of uh, being a couch potato and watching Netflix, uh-huh. you can invest in. Yourself, take Absolutely. take night classes. Take uh, find something that interests you. Read about it. Right. Uh, research about it. Blog about it. Just uh-huh. start something. Yeah. Put in time. So that's yeah. That's definitely definitely number two. And uh, number three would be just do it. Be confident. Uh-huh. Yeah. You have. You can't. You, don't question yourself. Right. Just. Just go for it. There are going to be some road bumps. Yeah. You know, there oh, are going to be some times. Oh, absolutely. That... Going to be, there are going to be some setbacks, and uh-huh. that's just natural. Right. In, in every every part of our lives, we're going to have some setbacks. Absolutely. So it's, and it's fine. Okay. And I would say, awesome. uh, bonus one, find something that um, isn't just helping you. Mm-hmm. Don't focus on yourself. Uh, focus on others, helping others. There you go. Because if it's here we go. If it's not bigger than yourself, it's not big enough. There you go. See, I've been telling everyone this for so long. Thank you for emphasizing that. Okay. All right. And then, and so, dude, that's huge. So then, you came to Thailand. What made you come here? Uh, I really, I really don't know. I have to come <laughs> up with a with a better story. But <laughs> right, right. So I was kind of in between after. Uh, 
I'm being a digital not working helper. out. Yeah, not, not working out with civil engineering. Uh, I spend some time in Central America. Yeah. So uh, I had a girlfriend from Honduras. So travel. Whoa, yeah, from travel Honduras. Yeah. Hi, food. Traveled around uh, for for quite a long time. So, yeah. Very something nice. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah travel around. <laughs> so, okay. Sorry. Yeah. I got thrown off, guys. Sorry yeah. about that. Uh, yeah, traveled around. Honduras. Uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, then just I, I wasn't. I just wanted to do. Yeah. I just wanted to do something different. So I applied for jobs. Yeah. Right. And, um, in South Korea, uh-huh. China, and Thailand. Uh-huh. For yeah, teaching jobs, right. and got callbacks from all of them, and then just decided to go with Thailand because I was really into wakeboarding at that point, and none of those other countries had any wakeboarding. <laughs> yeah, no, no like, way. Yeah, all right, I'm going. I'm going to Thailand, right. uh, and I've been before. Uh, so I did a I did a little, you know, uh, Asia trip a uh-huh. couple a couple a couple, of, a couple of years prior, uh, and yeah, so Thailand it was. So and then that's when your middle school teacher journey began, yeah, right? Yeah, that was it. That and was that it. was a year ago. Uh, just a bit more, uh, nearly two years ago. So it was okay. October of 2016. Oh, okay. Yeah. October 2016. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then, All right. And then, so of course you're teaching and you're saying to yourself, while you're teaching, this could probably relate to some teachers who might listen to this. In the next day, next week, next month, next year, there are a lot of people that get stuck. And we know that because they don't have a purpose in life, right? right. They don't have any passions. They come here because they're being forced out of their country. I hate, to, I hate to be very blunt, but it is true. And so they come here, and then they end up being part of that complaining party, right? So you were probably – I don't know if you saw that around you in terms of your colleagues. But when did you make the conscious decision to say, all right, that's it? I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going to go into fitness. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, I saw a lot of that. Uh, people get too comfortable. Yeah, uh, yeah. complacent. Around, yeah, man. complacent. Yeah, complacent. Yeah. Uh, too comfortable, and instead of making changes, uh, they're just complaining about <laughs> what's, what's wrong with their lives. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're not yeah. doing anything about it. Yeah. So I love the I love the experience by all means. It was a great experience teaching mm-hmm. uh, middle schoolers, and it was it was challenging, you know, having fifty kids mm-hmm. in, the, in the classroom with, with no teaching assistant, and then trying to uh, you know uh, manage their that's behavior. Crazy. It was it was crazy. It was yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. I used to do but, that too, man. Yeah, but yeah. That's the thing. So uh, while in Chambri, I started you know uh, I picked up some clients. I was like, hey, I have this certification why why don't I just use it uh-uh. uh, on the side so I was hustling on the side I was working as a teacher hey, and yeah. uh, it was f- flexible hours okay pretty flexible hours yeah okay. Did some tutoring here and there uh, yeah picked up a client or two mm-hmm. and just realized that hey uh, a client at a company a uh, client as a, as a personal training client oh okay yeah. there you yeah, go yeah, there you yeah, go there you yeah. go okay 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 yeah and and then and you yeah, said, started, "Hey, yeah." I was like, "I was like, hey, uh, yeah." I have to I have to get into this a little bit more. So I was going to Bangkok pretty much every weekend anyway uh, mm-hmm. to just hang out with my friends and uh, yeah, do stuff. And yeah, I ended up visiting a couple of gyms, you know, talking to them, just getting my name out there. And, uh, building uh, that brand, okay, yeah, guys. Exactly. Rule number one: building yeah. it. Yeah, that's it. Uh-huh. And then uh, decided to move. Moved to Bangkok eventually, so I was like, after a year uh, at a public school in uh-huh. Thailand, and I went. Okay, Damn, that, was, that, was that was a quick great. year, man. Yeah, uh-huh. that was great. Uh, I love the experience, but I can't, I can't be stuck yeah. here. And yeah, and since yeah. also online uh, jobs were kicking off, so uh, I was supplementing my income with that, and it was easy, right. uh, easy to do wherever I go. So hey, uh, I'm gonna go go to Bangkok. Uh, moved to Bangkok and found started looking for, you know, work as a as a trainer, uh-huh. and yeah, just became super super passionate. Uh, or I was always passionate about health, yeah. and I was always watching what I'm eating mm-hmm. uh, a little bit, and then promoting a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. Uh, what I realized once the more. I read the more I realized how when I was crazy probably shit. fittest I've ever been, I was most unhealthy. Whoa! Yeah, uh, fittest so, the the but, most fit, but yeah, the most, most unhealthy. Fit, 
most unhealthy, yeah. Now, explain to us what does that mean? So, uh, being fit, I mean, uh, being fit is one thing. Uh -huh. uh, it just, yeah, you can can perform well, you mm -hmm. can, can move fast, you can do things, you know, uh, say CrossFit athletes that are super fit. Mm -hmm. Most of them are not healthy at all. Oh, right, <laughs> they're right, over, right. Overworking their bodies, uh, the food that they're getting. So I got super, I became, a, yeah, I became, about yeah, too. I became such a nutrition nerd. So I read every uh, book on on nutrition that it, that was out there, uh -huh. pretty much. So like uh, different takes, mm -hmm. uh, taking everything with a pinch of salt, uh, just realizing that I recognize a pattern uh -huh. that... Uh, the pattern was that, have you heard of Blue Zones, by the way? No. So Blue Zones are those places around the world uh, that are famous for longevity. Uh -huh. And they were kind of... Norwegian yeah. countries. Uh, not necessarily. Oh, okay. right, uh, right, right. So Sardinia is one of them. Well, Okinawa in Japan is another one. Whoa, then, the military uh, base. Three, okay. uh, in Greece, and then uh, oh. Loma Linda, California. Whoa, uh, yeah, Loma so Linda. Those, yeah. And they were essentially... Uh, following their diet, dietary patterns yeah. and what they eat, what they do. So I realized that being fit is just one part of being well and yeah. being healthy. So uh, there are more than there. It's like a single-dimensional approach to wellness and right. health. So I realized that uh, I want to take a multi-dimensional approach to fitness and wellness. Right. And uh, I realized that you have to not only be fit, mm -hmm. but also take care of what you eat. So uh, move, movement is number one. Okay. Uh, number two is nutrition. Okay. Number three is social circles. Yeah. Uh, so that's super, super, super important to have a support system, to have people who, just surrounding yourself with people, like-minded people. Absolutely. Yeah. God, and collaborating so with them. Uh, and number four is uh, your mind-body connection. So meditation. Yes. Uh, Mindfulness. Whatever yes. you do, you have to Personal take development. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You have to take take a second in your day and dedicate dedicate it to to, to yourself yeah. uh, to actually notice your breath. Uh, stop yeah. running for a second. Yeah, you know? <laughs> Dave, I yeah. love that. And obviously, sleep. Yeah, another another one. Sleep is huge. Yeah, sleep is Very underrated. Massive, massive, man. <laughs> I mean, some yeah. people are like, "Oh, I got five hours, six hours." I'm like. Eh. Uh, you know, it depends. Gary Vee and a lot of people say six hours is enough. Hey, I mean, it just all depends. depends. You have to listen to your body, yeah, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's that's another thing that I discovered. So I, uh, I used to go, every time I went to the gym, mm. I used to go hard, hard, hard. Mm. And then I realized it's not really serving me. Uh, mm. So I kind of toned it back a little bit, started listening to my body a little bit. If, if I'm too tired, if I'm sore, hey, I'm going to take a day off. There I'm going to go. take it easy. That's what uh, I do too. I don't, have to, I don't have to go hard every single day uh -huh. because it's not serving me. Right. So, And being a personal trainer, obviously I know how to train others, uh, but I wouldn't apply that knowledge to myself because it's like, ah, I just want to go hard. I want to, I want to perform. Uh -huh. uh, it wasn't serving me. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and about it's been, it's been over half a year, I would say. Uh -huh. uh, I went completely plant based. Plant oh, yeah. oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you're on a plant based diet right yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. So tell us like, about that. So no, no animal products. Okay. Uh, at all. All right. So no eggs, no milk, no uh, meat, no fish, like nothing. Yeah. Uh, and, and you huge. Yeah. I don't know how you make. That. Okay, keep going. I'll, yeah, I won't so, interrupt. That's crazy. Uh, I was. I was just interested in it because all the dietary patterns that I've always, so all those nutrition books that I've read, mm -hmm. I noticed that pattern that of the populations that thrive mm -hmm. on, that thrive and live long mm -hmm. are all on pretty much mainly plant-based diets. Right. So I uh, did more research into, into it. I just, I had, I, I was such a, such a massive meat eater, like insane. I would eat meat three times a day wow. uh, and I was just yeah I loved a good steak yeah. uh, all that good stuff yeah. and so I was like yeah, am I really giving, giving this up right. for for what uh -huh. <laughs> then as I said I, I found enough compelling research uh -huh. and uh, recognized those patterns that uh -huh. hey this is something that might serve me right. so I was like, I'm gonna give it a shot 
couple of months. I'll give it. I'll give it a month in the beginning. Uh-huh. So thirty days. Uh, let's see. Let's see how it goes. Mm-hmm. Uh, started it and started feeling amazing. Wow. My recovery uh, just skyrocketed. Like wow. say, the recovery sp- uh, speed and just skyrocketed and. I went, hey, I'm, I don't think I, I want to go back. So I continued with it. I rolled with it. And um, yeah, I put in time, definitely. Uh-huh. Definitely put in time. And you have to you have to pay attention to what you do, how you do it. Because uh-huh. if you're half-assing it, it's not going to work. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I have yeah. to, again, all in or all out. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> back, to, back to that. So yeah, I went all in. And... Um, what I do recommend to people in general, yeah. so making whole foods their priority in okay. general. So uh, instead of so processed stuff, throw it out. Okay. Throw out all the processed stuff. That's Actually, what I did yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 because I thought about it. Well, like in terms of my health, you know yeah. what I mean? Like I had a little bit of a sore throat. I don't look at the way of, okay, how can I get rid of this? I'm asking myself, What's the underlying problem? What vitamins? What am I missing out on? So I went to the store. I got some hard-nosed carrots. I cut them up. I boiled them. I got the fruits. And within 20 minutes, I swear, I felt so much better. Exactly. And so it's it's out there. Don't always go for what's on the surface. You have to go for the underlying problem. Right, right. No, so. Exactly. Because so preventative medicine, and in general, that's mm-hmm. what I'm super passionate about, how nutrition, when you think about it, is just what do we put in our bodies. Yeah. That's – it's – it fuels us. Like yep. Every day, it fuels us. So if you if you do choose uh, to eat uh-huh. meat products or uh, animal products, make sure that it's not it's not farm raised. You know, because uh, uh-huh. pumped with antibiotics. Because it's not just you know you know the saying um, we are what we eat. Yeah, 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 absolutely. No, we are what we eat. Ate. We are what we eat. Ate. Yeah. Okay. So uh, imagine a cow that is pumped with antibiotics. Crazy, man. It's, it goes. It goes straight to your body. Yeah. I mean, your body recognizes. Uh, so the flesh, uh-huh. that's cow's flesh, right? Doesn't doesn't just filter those anti- antibiotics out. Right. You inhale them when you're e- when you're eating them. Right. So. Wow. It, if you choose to eat animal products, which I'm all for, uh, for it, because not not everybody can can choose to be 100% plant based. Sure. But uh, treating animal products as a condiment rather than the main meal. Right. So if you're if you're eating, uh, instead of having a piece of meat in the middle of your plate, yeah, it has to be all veggies in the middle of your plate and some meat on the side. Okay. Thing. I like that. And uh, so, for example, for beef, it should be uh, pasture raised, grass fed. Grass-fed beef, grass so fed good beef. quality. Okay. Uh, if you choose to eat butter, also grass-fed. So everything should be uh, quality. Okay. And you can say, yeah, but it's so expensive. You know, I mean, cancer is more expensive, right? Oh, <laughs> boy. hey, and you hit the button there. Yeah, yeah diseases in general Shit. are more expensive. Diabetes, than, uh-huh. yeah, diabetes Thailand, high blood pressure, yeah, heart disease, yeah, America, just yeah. about everything. Oh my God, man! Like the. Shit. I try telling my family, you know what I mean? It's insane, it's yeah. insane. Yeah, so quality, uh, eggs. So Paleo Robby here in, in Thailand, they're providing people with good quality meats and fish and eggs. So, What's the name? Uh, Paleo Robby. Okay. Yeah, so they have, it's online, it's an online store. Uh, okay. They have like uh, pasture raised eggs, uh-huh. which is quality. See, man, that's what I love about yeah, Thailand, you can, you can even you can't even see the difference between if it's a farm raised egg, it's like kind of yellowish, whereas uh, pasture raised, it's orange. It's like all those nutrients are there, oh. you know. So that's quality. Uh-huh. And so in general, back to blue, back to the blue zones, ninety uh, plus percent of their diets are plant based, uh-huh. are from vegetables, from starches, and then uh, meat is like a celebration. Uh, thing they they have it once in a while so uh, and those people live they're they're most they have those zones have most centenarians uh, so people who live over 100 years uh-huh. yeah wow. yeah so I, was like, I found enough compelling research that I realized hey it's something that uh, have to try and I think that's going to promote my health, promote my longevity right. and something that I really want people to 
incorporate in their daily lives. And that's something, again, uh, I'm not saying cut everything out. Not everyone is like me who can go uh, cold turkey and start, you know, a hundred percent. So little by little, little, little bit. Yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, rather uh, than uh, saying something that restricting something, uh -huh. rather than doing that, just eat more of good, uh -huh. eat less of bad. Right. And then. You start there, you, you, you start feeling better, uh -huh. you start recognizing it. Uh -huh. It's like, hey, why wouldn't I just continue with, you know, uh, putting good fluids in my body right. and feeling better? Right. So it's like, yeah. Wow. Okay. So then, of course, you got the plant-based diet. What do you think? I want, I want to hear your opinion. I never got the opportunity to ask anyone, but keto diet. Now, of course, Lou, who just walked out of here. She was on that and whatnot, and of course, there's a lot of bad rap from different doctors and then other fitness trainer gurus, as they call themselves, in America. They always say, yeah, it's an excellent diet. I had this guy comment on my blog saying, all this crazy stuff. So what's, what's your take on the ketogenic and all that? So uh, as, a, as a trainer, I tried pretty much every diet uh, there is out there. And that's good. And that's good. As yeah, a trainer, so, you got to try exactly. it. Right? Yeah, I had yeah, to, yeah. I had to try it so I can actually advise uh, my cut uh, my clients on, yeah, on my personal experience. Actually. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, so keto diet does have a place okay. in uh, one's diet. Uh -huh. uh, not It's not for everybody. Uh -huh. It absolutely isn't. Um, your body adapts to it. So what... What I do agree with is uh, cyclical uh -huh. uh, ketosis. Uh -huh. So it's uh, you're not, you don't have to stay it, stay in it the whole time. Mm -hmm. But so in the biohacking community, I don't know if you heard of uh, Bulletproof uh, Dave Asprey. Oh guy. Yeah. wow, so, you heard of Dave Asprey? Yeah, okay, yeah. So the, that's that awesome. Guy, that, okay. Guy, that guy knows what he's talking about. He's the, he has a lot of compelling research on it. Absolutely. And uh, again. It's not for everybody because he he's obsessed with it. He's in it. He lives that life. It's a it's a lifestyle. He right. uh, he make he makes sure he knows the quality of everything that he puts in his body, type of thing. So not right. everybody has time for that. Not yeah. everybody can do it. Yeah. So again, if you're doing uh, the keto diet, it has to be done right. Uh, yeah, you have okay. to dedicate time for that, and it does does have some anecdotal. Uh, Evidence of how it reverse type two diabetes, wow. but uh, so anecdotal evidence. Uh, whereas plant based diet has some science based, uh, science backed research that that reverses type two diabetes, heart disease, and stuff like that. So it's again uh, not everyone can go all in or all out. If you're if you're trying to implement one of your one of those diets into your daily routine uh, you have to you have to do it right you right. have to find find a person it's just not just reading up online uh -huh. uh, you have to do extensive research you have to find a fitness and wellness professional who who has some background in it uh -huh. and it's not it's not it's not as easy as you think it is you know it's right. it's, it's work yeah it's work right <laughs> Wow. So, but it does have have a place in one's uh, in one's diet for sure. Okay. It's just when it's done right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh boy, that is a lot of good information. I'm really happy that I actually asked you that. Um, okay, so here we go. Engineer, you said no. Went into teaching. It was good. Teacher trainer. Now you're a fitness guy. And now you're now you're in terms of entrepreneurship, brand building, and your girlfriend, like you mentioned, she has these delicious, okay, these delicious breads. Fantastic. And the thing is, banana, anything banana bread. I swear, I was a kid, 11 years old, and this lady, my mother's friend, she would bring over this home cooked banana bread. Oh my God, man! And so when you mentioned that, I started salivating. So what made you get into, you went from engineer and you were like, this isn't for me, just like me and dental assistant. I said, what, you want me to be a slave? I can't even strike up conversations with the patients. You want me to just hurry up and do the job? And I just felt so out of place. I felt miserable because, of course, I love to talk, as you can see. You know, I just love to, you know, chat it up with people. So you went all from that and now you went into the fitness industry. Now you're into personal training. You absolutely love it. Now you're branching out and you're doing other things. What other things are you doing? All right, so I'm trying to uh, 
get my name out, uh, establish myself as a, establish my personal brand mm -hmm. here in Thailand mm -hmm. as a, as a credible voice mm -hmm. in the fitness and wellness industry, okay. and trying to take this multi-dimensional approach mm -hmm. uh, to wellness in general. Mm -hmm. uh, because as I said, fitness, I love it. Personal training, I absolutely love it. Uh, yeah, it's it's great. It has so movement in general has to have a has to have a part of. In every every person's daily routine, sure. so it's it's important. Yeah, but it's, that's not just that. Yeah. So that's that's what I'm trying to uh, my clients, people around me. I'm trying to preach, not preach, uh, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, educate them yeah. how there are other factors that you have to that you have to incorporate into your life in order to be healthy, feel good, and perform well. So, um, yeah, in terms of developing my brand, as I said, uh, just is it tough? Absolutely, okay, yeah. Okay. It, it requires. You're going up against a lot of people, but the thing is, we have foreign compared to. Well, that, that's the thing. The language barrier. So, a lot of people would be predisposed to going to, of course, Thai trainers and right, going to right. So, Absolutely. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, just again, now, just trying to establish myself in the. The expat community okay. first, and then uh, gonna start collaborating with uh, the locals and trying to get the word out there, yeah. and not just again. I'm, I'm not just trying to uh, attract more clients, attract more customers. I also want to get the word out to educate people Absolutely. on, on kind of like me, yeah. What yeah. health actually is, right. I mean, and how how to approach it from, from a friendly perspective. Because I mean, we. Uh, even so, America, Thailand, completely different cultures, uh, and they have completely different ideas about health. Yeah, and so <laughs> so much misinformation out there. And the thing is, America, the bodybuilding. You yeah, know, you got yeah. the bodybuilding guys who literally say CrossFit this, CrossFit that, cardio is ridiculous. <laughs> and the thing is, a lot of them just fall off. And I mean, who was the uh, Ronnie Coleman? Yeah. Okay. What you know what I mean? And this is in terms of like fitness and health. This guy was absolutely massive, but who? I don't know what the story. I don't know the steroids or this or that. It is an absolute shame to see where he was, and now he's walking around with crutches. Again, guys, don't do this to your body. That's why you made a really solid point in terms of, okay, the whole health aspect, but what about the food, nutrition? What about your social circles, your family, your friends? Personal development, physical environment, romantic relationships. Are you living or dying in a relationship? You know, you have to address these things. So, I, I mean, and of course, CrossFit. You know, so CrossFit, it's really tough on the joints, too. It's, I mean, it's tough on everything. It's, it's, a, it's a great workout. Yeah. Uh, I love incorporating some of, uh, some of it uh -huh. in my weekly workout. So okay. I do it. I go... If I go hard, I do a cross CrossFit workout. Oh. I do it once or twice a week, maybe. Okay. Uh, maybe twice. That's it. Yeah. But once, I go hard, and, and that's it. That's all you need, uh -huh. pretty much. If you want to stay healthy, uh, if it's not something you're trying to pursue, uh, again, it all depends. It all depends what you're what you're looking at. Uh, it, it all depends what your goals are. Uh -huh. But usually... I, I tell people that you have to maintain the balance and uh, know what you're doing it for. Uh, right. If you're killing yourself for for nothing, that's mm -hmm. it's not it's not really it doesn't really serve you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, healthy lifestyle is about uh, balance mm -hmm. uh, or lack thereof. Right. So being you know on the both sides of the pendulum mm -hmm. and then still kind of maintaining that balance when you're going crazy on one one thing, crazy on another thing, mm -hmm. and just trying to bring everything together and develop that, uh, put those pillars of, of health right. in one mm -hmm. and kind of feed it, uh, feed it off of each other. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I like to ask people this question because they ask me to. Okay. Uh, who's your biggest in inspiration? My biggest inspiration? Yeah. My biggest inspiration is seeing other people. Uh, happy mm -hmm. or when, when you yeah. when you when you help them mm -hmm. when you have a chance to help them mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's my biggest inspiration just uh, seeing other people thrive mm -hmm. and knowing that 
you had a part. Yeah. In it. yeah. That's it, man. So that's my, it, that's it, my biggest inspiration. It, 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 and I love that. I've mentioned this so many times. I used to teach a student, 14 years old. Her name was Kim Kim. And I remember the first time I met her, she spoke fluent English, Thai, Thai born, everything. Uh-huh. I said, how'd you learn? She said, I mimicked everything I heard on videos and movies and this and that. And I said, where do you want to go for university? She said, Thomas. I said, no. She said, what? I said, no. I said, you need to leave Thailand. There's nothing else this country has to offer you. I'm sorry. She's like, where am I going to go? I said, what do you want to do? Business, entrepreneurship. I said, Singapore. She went to Singapore. Now she has an online business at the age of 17 and about to get her BA next year. See, that's how I live through that. That's my inspiration, spurring other people on to success. So I'm glad you made that point. So um, well, what's your 10-year um, outlook? Because me, brand building, you know, getting my name out there, doing collabs, growing, meeting people, doing this, doing that. I would love to go to South America after I establish my brand here. So what is it? What's your outlook? Because now you're here two years on. Mm. So, yeah, uh, once I once I establish, establish, uh, establish my brand, yeah. uh, establish my name here, uh, working with... Yeah, developing online businesses that I still don't, don't really want to talk about. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's early stages. Okay, uh, so, okay, yeah. there you go. Uh, there just you trying go. to work that out. Uh, making something that is going to be self-sustainable. Good. And uh, that has passive income, there which is go. really important. Good. And then, yeah, so with fitness and wellness, uh, establishing myself here, mm-hmm. and then moving my name, my brand to, to Bali. To Bali. Bali. Yeah, yeah. Bali has yeah amazing, amazing uh, food scene, uh, wellness scene. Just wow. everything. Everything is just great. I love uh, Bali. Yeah, man. Bali is yeah. amazing, man. Oh, yeah, so. I went there. My heart's still there from two years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. same here. So uh, my girlfriend and I keep keep coming back there. So yeah. it's it's yeah some food for your soul. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah, just going moving forward, just uh-huh. every day, every way, a little bit better, you mm. know. Yeah, uh, and trying to yeah, trying to reach as many people as possible okay. and s- inspire them, help them, uh, move forward myself, uh-huh. and help others move forward as well. So awesome. Yeah. Okay. All right. So good. AJ, man, it's been a pleasure. I know you got a class coming up real soon, so yeah. I'm going to let you get your yeah. things, some breakfast and stuff. I know you had your protein shake. Coffee. Um, coffee. Oh, coffee. There we go. Coffee. No protein shakes, right? No, no protein. Nope. Okay. Okay. You're plant-based. That's right. That's yeah. right. Okay. So how can people get in contact with you? Again, guys, I'm going to have all the links in the description on here and on the blog, which will debut with the show notes later on tonight. Awesome. So um, I'm on Instagram. Uh, fit with AJ underscore IG. Uh, you can find me on Facebook uh, and also fitwithaj.org and fitwithajbkk.com. Uh, and yeah, uh, feel free to reach out. You have any questions? You need some inspiration? You, ha- you need some resources on how to start a plant based diet? You need some books, uh, information on how to live live a, live a healthy lifestyle? Uh, I'm going to try to boil all that information down into my nutrition book that is coming oh, up. Oh, there you go. Okay. More of a yeah ebook. Ebook. Okay. <laughs> ebook. So something something easy to follow, okay. something to refer refer back to, and yeah. All right. All right. Sounds good, guys. I hope you can take something away from this. This was a great podcast. Again, AJ, thanks for taking the time. Thanks for having me. Thanks for kicking my ass earlier today, too. That was uh, that was ruthless. Uh, <laughs> man, oh, real quick, before you go, what's the toughest conditioning workout out there? Because this assault bike, all right, guys, assault bike, just Google it, or the rowing machine, then you have the Stairmaster. What is the number one thing in terms of conditioning, fat burning? Oh, what would you tell my, somebody? So, uh, fat burning, Tabata. Any oh exercise, you can incorporate Tabata in, uh, into any exercise. That's, that's four minutes of 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. So that uh, boils down to eight rounds. 
and you can do it with any exercise, push-ups, pull-ups, what have you. So 20 seconds you spend working, jumping around, doing jumping jacks, 10 seconds you're resting. Mm -hmm. So literally any exercise, you can do it anywhere. Uh, that's probably one of the best conditioning, uh, conditioning workouts out there. And on the assault bike, <laughs> you love Devil's Machine. There is Devil's a, Machine, there, yes. There is an option, the 1020 interval. So Ooh. that's also uh, four minutes. Mm. So 10 seconds you go as hard as you can, 20 seconds you rest. It's like rest completely stop or uh, just, just light, yeah, light? Yeah, okay, exactly. Like, back. Uh, yeah, oh active, active rest. And that workout is brutal. Wow. So four minutes, you can, um, it depends. So some people... Depends on your on your size, I guess, how many calories you burn right. on the assault bike. But uh, that's yeah, ten seconds on, twenty seconds off. Uh, try it out. It's you can't. You're not gonna believe how. So uh, when you think about it, is one minute and twenty seconds of work. That's yeah. it. That's it. Uh, uh, but it right. just kicks your kicks your butt like nothing else. Right. Yeah. All right. Man, that's awesome. All right, guys. So if you don't have an assault bike, there's eight. If you got four minutes in the morning. Go to Tabata, uh, figure out what exercises you can do within that allotment, and just hit it hard. So, again, AJ, thanks so much for tuning in to my a good old podcast. Guys, if you have any questions, you, want, you know how to get in contact with him. You know how to get in contact with me. If you like this information, go on and share it, because that means you liked it. This is your host, Arsenio, as usual. Over and out.